Good morning, everybody. Orin J here with another War of the Visions video, and we might not be getting any new units in War of the Visions this Wednesday, but some of our old favorites, or at least my case, a very old and very favorite unit, are getting either Master Ability 2s or EX upgrades this week. So we're going to look at the EX upgrades for Elstra and Garvel, and then we're going to look at the Master Ability 2s for Murma, 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 Murmur, Etra, Frederica, and then finally, Mashari herself. Not Queen Mashari that's coming in the future, but I actually think with uh, regular Mashari's Master Ability 2, they have finally made her into what they meant to make her into in the beginning. But let's start by quickly taking a look at Elstra's EX upgrade. We're not going to spend a ton of time here. It's pretty basic. Her HP goes up by about 1,000. Her magic goes up from 376 to 585. Actually, over a 200 magic increase. And they are really leaning into Elstra's damage dealing capabilities with this EX buff. Her dex and luck go up a little bit, but that's really nothing special. I would have liked to see her agility go up some as well, but it's stuck at 58. And if we jump into looking at her kit, you'll see what I'm talking about with the uh, real emphasis on damage. She did get her slow counter upgraded. It now reduces speed by 50% if it procs instead of 30%, and it gained a range. This isn't a huge deal to me because if Elstra is getting hit, Elstra's probably dying unless it's like a certain PvE situation. Um, which, I mean, she was definitely an MVP for me in my light selection quest runs, uh, but I'm more, more focused on her main job buffs. Okay, she's a Time Mage main job, and she's already a good one. She has Quicken in there. That's fantastic. Her potential as a support is nice. The problem was, if you wanted haste, you'd have to run her Time Mage sub job. That meant you really didn't have a bunch of damage. With this EX upgrade, her Meteor, which is her hardest hitting spell, gets a range plus one upgrade and dispels buffs in haste for the target. This is a nice buff. It'll help her do more damage. It's a colorless, single target, really hard hitting magic attack. She's also getting Pain of Rebirth now, which gives her an AoE magic attack in her main job. That is a light based attack that also dispels Protect and Shell for targets. So like, what does this mean for Elstra? I think she's still probably like a niche PvE MR unit. It. It's hard to recommend her in a lot of like cost limited PvP situations because Fina probably still just outshines her in my opinion. But these are good upgrades helping her do more damage. And if you want to bring her in PvE, like Rune Knight will still be a good sub job for her. She already hit super hard with this, now she'll hit even harder. And then she has White Mage for healing as well. In a PvE situation, like I mentioned in like Selection Quest, she can get the job done for you. Okay, let's go look at Garvel's EX upgrade. This is one that I know a lot of people have been excited for. And his stat increases are a lot like Elstra's, and that's a little disappointing to me. His HP goes from 2668 to 3380. Not quite a thousand there, but one thing about Garvel is he's going to be um, a tankier boy with this EX upgrade. More on that when we get to his kit. His magic does get a nice buff from 385 to 466, but he is actually still not even as high of a magic stat as Elshra. Garvel, remember though, can overcome that in the first several turns of a fight with his um, hyperactivity support ability. Again, we'll check that out in a minute. His agility stays at 58. I would have really liked to see that go up. Um, his defense and spirit stay at 10 and 2. He does get some dex and luck, but with Garvel, he has an AoE 100% hit move that is the bread and butter of his kit, and I think that will remain the truth. Really, um, not super impressed with his stat increase, but he did need this stat increase to become like relevant again. Now, let's look at his kit. What upgraded in his kit? Did they successfully bring Garvel into the modern age? Well, I think you're still going to want to run hyperactive on him almost no matter what. This is that huge steroid for agility, magic, and dex for the first five turns of a fight. And in a lot of PvP situations, five turns in a fight is about what you're going to get. So, um, I still think you run this. I still think it's good. Then they buffed spreading the airflow. This was a 30% magic boost for himself. It now is also 12% more HP. This will help make him tankier and the magic, um, even though the magic buff on this didn't change, you can maybe feel a little bit better about running it now. Combined with hyperactive, I think his stats are at a modern level for the first five turns of combat. Okay, let's continue looking though. Remember, he does have reflex for both um, physical and magic attacks, but you have to pick one. 
It's still good, but you have to pick one. Okay, what changed on him here? Miasma. This was his barrier. It used to be a physical damage 50% barrier um, for three times. It is now an all damage 50% barrier for three times. Good. I think this is a really good upgrade. Um, there's just a lot of different types of magic damage in the game right now. If you wanted to use Garvel to hunt like Light Evade, you know, for example, there's a lot of magic out there in Light of Aid. A physical barrier might not do a ton for you unless you're fighting like Locke or Violet. Starlight Elena would eat him alive. This barrier might help him, you know, live through a little bit of what she can do. Then his job level 25 ability that he's getting is a Spirit Penetration 50 buff for 3 turns for himself. That's a good buff. And 200% damage, single target, range 4, range height 2. Like, it's a good skill, but his dex and luck are still pretty low. So if you're fighting evasion teams, I think you're still going to lean on Detonation Blast, which is that 100% hit AoE move that, like, is what Garvel is known for. Um, this new move, his job level 25 move, also kind of doesn't make sense when you think about the fact that his Limit Break already had a 50 Spirit Penetration buff on it, does more damage, and uh, decreases spirit for the target, and also hits in an AoE. So, like, his job level 25 skill is underwhelming to me, but he does get enough stats that if you're a Garvel fan, I think you can put him into some dark teams now, and, you know, knock some people out of the fight. Okay, guys, now, now we're getting to my favorite part of this video. We're going to talk about Master Ability 2s. I love Master Ability 2s. Let's start with Murmur. She's an SR unit, the lowest rarity unit we're going to talk about in this video. And uh, here on the screen, you see her old master ability, which is a lot. It's 10% resist to slash pierce strike missile magic, which is all of them, and a 20% magic buff for herself. All of that stays the same. She's just also picking up 800 more HP and 10 magic attack. Um, this is good. And in a lot of like super cost limited formats where you're considering using a 40 cost unit like Murmur, that 800 HP combined with her like very high resist that she brings with her master ability and her resist naturally could help her survive a hit or two. And the boosted magic attack, yo, she has jamming thrust. Maybe she could jamming thrust some people for you in a limited PvE or PvE p situation um and so there it is that's it's not a big change for murmur just giving her a little more damage and a little bit more survivability with 800 more hp etras is more interesting to me now um you've already probably seen the video on this channel of etra soloing earth selection quest 7 8 9 and 10 that's a big deal, and she did it as an evasion unit. With her master ability too, they are really leaning into evasion Etra, which I would have thought is stupid until I saw that her video of her clearing um, Earth Selection by herself. So previously, she had move 1, jump 1, evasion 10. The move 1 and jump 1 stay the same. The evasion goes up to 30. So she's getting 20 more evasion in her master ability. Um, the person who made the video of Avoid Etra doing Earth Selection was doing it with a Sage's hat. They mentioned that if they had UR dodge gear, she might have been even easier to use. Well... Sage's hat's plenty good now because she's picking up 20 more evasion from her master ability. She's also picking up an HP 10% buff for her earth allies and an immobilized resist 25% for earth allies. Neither of those are a huge deal. That 10% more HP will be nice though. Um, Etra, definitely a candidate for like soloing earth selection. She's just going to be better at it now. Her master ability doubles down on that. Next up, Frederica. Now, Frederica already a staple lightning unit a tier below for sure the cloud abara renan esther tier but lightning is so dang stacked that frederica even existed in that conversation was a compliment to her and she was doing it with a master ability that was missile attack plus 15 that was her whole master ability now she's bringing the ur buff hp plus 10 percent lightning attack plus 15 for the whole group Great, that's going to make her easier to work into your lightning teams. Her missile attack 15 is staying the same. She's picking up 10 defense pin. Would have liked to seen more here, but 10 is decent and AP consumption minus 30. So really the big deal with Frederica's is this group buff. That's just going to be really nice. And now if you're subbing her in because you're trying to do like a cloud Fred missile type of team, you're at least not missing out on that elemental buff that an Abara or an Esther or a Renan would bring. So does this make Frederica better? Yes. Does it make her a ton better? No. Does it feel better putting her into your lightning groups? Absolutely it does now. Um, she was great anyway. 
she remains great. I think she still remains a tier below. Esther and Cloud, you know, as far as physical damage dealers for lightning, but literally everyone in the game was a tier below Esther and Cloud when it comes to damage dealers. So there's Frederica. Now, the most exciting part of this video for me is Mashari Horn's Master Ability 2. Now look, previously her Master Ability was TP plus 10%, which GTFO, that's terrible, and then Agility plus 10. Okay, I can ex respect the Agility plus 10, but TP plus 10%, what the heck? What they wanted Mashari to be was like a Bruiser Mage, right? And they tried to make her both a Physical and Magic Bruiser Mage, like maybe trying to make her a hybrid here. It all revolved around her limit break. And they, okay, let's just read your Master Ability 2, then we'll get there. First of all, upgrade Double Strike of Light. That's their limit break. We're going to go look at that in a minute. She gets the Light buff for uh, Light Allies. Good, so she brings that now. TP plus 10%, that stays the same. She picks up Magic plus 30%. So they're finally just leaning into the fact that she's a Mage. She does not have attack. She's not meant to do physical damage. She's a Mage. They're giving her 30% Magic. Excellent. Um, agility plus 10 stays the same, and she's picking up negative 3 hate. So she will start a fight with negative hate, which means enemies will target other people. Excellent. That's good. Now, let's go look at that limit break, because this is the thing that never made sense on Mashari. She had a physical striking attack limit break that did 213% damage, 2 hit attack, and it increased all of her attack resistances by 45% for one turn. Like, on paper, that's really decent if it was a physical DPS unit, but it's Mashari. She's a mage slash with, like, a weird supporter AI going on. Oh, baby, did they fix this move. It is now still 213%, but scales off of magic instead of attack. It is now also a 100% hit chance move and increases all of her attack resistances by 60% for three turns. That's slashing, piercing, striking, magic, and missile, plus 60% for three turns. That means if she has 40% of a resist, she will go to 100. It's not hard to get 40% of a resist on a unit. It's not hard to get 40% of many different resists on a unit. So if you can get her to go into a fight and pop this limit break, even once she's overcome that negative hate that she has, she might just have like full on resists. Are there resist piercings in the game? Yes, but this is a very, very good move now. I don't know if I've seen a move upgraded, like a limit break upgraded that much since like King Elba's limit break got changed around and it made it good. Look, is Mashari an S tier unit now? Of course not. No, she's not. Is she usable though? Well, you better believe I'm going to find out. I'm excited to try out some Mashari teams now. Uh, man, that's a really, really cool upgrade. And they've kind of made her what she was sort of supposed to be. A mage, but like sort of a frontline bruisery mage, I guess, who hits people with her stick. Good. I dig it. That's a cool upgrade. And then... That's the video. Those are the changes that are coming to the units this week. I am obviously most excited for Mashari. I know we got a lot of Garvel fans out there who've been waiting for this as well. So good luck to all of us as we try to beat down the meta with our buffed old units over the next few days. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.